SSG vs Ents, a classic matchup. The two strongest teams in EMEA have gone head-to-head -head plenty of times, with SSG nearly always taking away the win. The two are rivals, scrim partners, and in many ways very similar, with both preferring brawl compositions. Today, we're going to look at one of the key components to SSG's brawl that provides them with the consistency to win time and time again, Landon's Baptiste. SSG and Ents met in the lower bracket final, with SSG taking Oasis 2-1. Ents' map pick is Havana, a map known for its long sightlines and first point spawn holds. SSG starts on defense, and Ents are on attack. SSG are in brawl composition, as expected, and they set up close to perform a spawn hold. There's something strange about SSG's composition, though. Rather than the typical Mei, Psycho is on Echo. There's a reasonable explanation for this. Backbone and Psycho are SSG's two flex DPS players, and they excel in different hero pools. Backbone is SSG's May player, and Psycho normally runs to Tracer. The meta back in EMEA, where both of these teams qualified, was Ram cast Tracer, so you're normally going to have Psycho in. Spawn holds are a bit different though. May walls are particularly great for blocking off spawn doors, preventing opponents from retreating back inside, and May is also difficult to deal with due to her survivability. The goal of a spawn hold is to buy time, and May is built for that purpose. Now, SSG can choose between having a stronger spawn hold fight by throwing their May player in, or they can choose to run the optimal composition for the rest of the map and throw their Tracer player in. The choice here is kind of obvious. A spawn hold is only one or two fights, so you'll want the optimal composition for the rest of the map, so Psycho's in. The probable reason Psycho didn't force May is that he felt too uncomfortable with the pick and would rather just stick with the hero he was more comfortable with. Echo is still a decent pick here, just not the optimal choice. Let's get this round started. Kevster goes for a shot at a spawn and makes a quick swap over to Genji. Ents are waiting patiently and walk out to the right door as a squad of five. Landon is starting in a position farther back, using the left room as an effective form of cover. During a spawn hold, this is typically the best default position for a Baptiste to hold. SSG challenges Ents, and after both Ramatras trade CDs, Ents backs off into spawn to allow Kevster to immediately swap off of Genji. Genji can be situationally good, but this is not one of those situations. Kevster saw Psycho and Echo and realized that he'd be fighting an uphill battle. It's just a poor matchup for Genji. This next fight is about to get a lot more stressful. We'll be looking at Landon's resource management in particular, as this is what makes him such a good Baptiste player. Ents roll out to the right door once again, catching Hottie off guard, who is down to critical HP. Landon, understanding Hottie has form available, trusts him to survive and holds on to the immortality. Hottie then uses the form and leaves Landon's LOS, so Landon switches focus to his DPS with Sparker in particular needing assistance. Landon flicks back over to Hottie and uses his regen burst at around max range to keep him alive. Hottie kites away, sustaining through Ents' immense pressure. Landon holds on to the immortality into the last possible moment, using it after reloading to assure Psycho's survival. Landon switches back to helping Hottie, layering damage and healing to take down Vistola, winning SSG their first fight. If you win even one fight with a spawn hold like this, you've basically succeeded in obtaining some value from it. The minimum time you want to buy is about a minute and SSG are already near that mark. You may have also noticed that Landon had his head on a swivel here at the end, saving Sparker from a late fight pick that would have been devastating for SSG. Hottie sets himself up for the next fight on the right side door, and now you might be able to catch on to what SSG are trying to do here. Hottie is placing himself up close and close to the spawn door, acting as bait, while Ents chases and uses their cooldowns to try and take him down. Hottie does this because playing a more neutral position around the cart would mean giving cart space if he were required to kite, and one of the most important rules of a spawn hold is to never let your opponent push the cart, so Hottie is essentially bait here. Ents chases Hottie, as expected, and when Ents has committed far enough, Landon throws down the window, forcing Ents to disengage. On their re-engage, Landon's initial target is Vistola, and SSG must now play slower, as Ghost currently has window up. Landon does his best to keep Sparker alive, but he falls before he receives beat. With the beat up, SSG now want to look to trade since they have a temporary advantage. Landon swings out with focus on Kevster, and after forcing him away, he can switch to Hottie, who's taking the ram duel. Kevster re-engages, and Landon uses the immortality to afford a bit more time to assist Hottie. And after Vistola falls, Kevster can be finished off. With a bit of disrespect at the end. Next fight begins the same way. Hottie's up close, and uses everything to chase him down, but Kai's Deadeye does catch Funny Astro. Sparker uses Deadeye as well, finding absolutely nothing, and Kevster lands a pulse onto Psycho, who Landon does save with Lamp, but ends with Kevster taking him down. 
Ents broke SSG's spawn hold after 2 minutes and 15 seconds, and SSG have plenty of time to regroup and take another solid fight on this first point. This fight starts with SSG rotating to clear Ents off of the high ground. Vistola uses Annihilation in an attempt to hold onto the position but is quickly forced away. Hottie also makes the mistake of using his own Annihilation when chasing wasn't an option, and SSG are forced to back away, making this a 1-1 to -one ult trade. Here's where things get a little uncomfortable for Landon. He is very, very close to obtaining the window, but he's not there just yet. Hottie rotates out to the right, and Landon doesn't follow. The reason for this was likely that Landon wanted to use the window from the angle while Hottie pushed on his own accord. This might have worked if Landon had window at that moment, but a few seconds makes a huge difference. Kevster is ready to pressure Landon, and Vistola throws a slow into Landon's position, placing him under immense pressure. Landon does throw down the Immortality and Window in an attempt to keep the fight alive, but practically all of Ents honed in on his position and shut him down. With Brawlamirs, looking for windows of opportunity in an opponent's rotations like this is extremely important. You can't just throw all of your resources into the enemy tank and expect to win. You need to look for openings and vulnerabilities, and sometimes that even means ignoring the tank, like how Ents ignored Hottie here to secure a fight-winning kill onto Landon. Now, I will place a bit of an asterisk on this line of thought, because this doesn't mean just shoot supports and win the game. What I'm trying to say is that you need to play your neutral normally, you can shoot and pressure their tank as much as you want, but you need to be ready to switch your focus at a moment's notice. Your opponent won't always be in a position where they can be punished, so identifying these opportunities comes down to your awareness during a fight. Ents have taken the first point, and SSG's Psycho has moved from Echo over to Tracer. Both teams are now mirrored. SSG makes their first rotation up to the right side high ground, and Landon deals a good bit of poke, wanting to min-max his window charge. Ents decide to take this fight first, but they make a mistake. Ghost throws his window much too far right into SSG's backline, making it very difficult to use. Landon keeps Funny Aster up while supporting Hottie until Vistola is forced to disengage. Kai uses Deadeye, and Landon makes a split-second decision to throw down Immortality. Funny Astro does boop Kai away, but the Immo gets value since Sparker uses it in his own Deadeye. After a quick regen burst and Hottie's kill into Ghost, SSG have taken the fight and can set up for the next. Landon is close to window, so he'll want to try and get it before the next fight, and the rest of SSG can help him with that. They do this by starting up close and poking Ents' spawn, retreating once Ents are ready to advance. This allows Landon to build the rest of his window before the fight begins. Landon now splits his focus between assisting Psycho with the Tracer duel and assisting Hottie. Both are important. In the stage of the fight before Ents and SSG take a direct brawl, Landon can afford to expend resources on Psycho. Once Ents actually make their move, Landon immediately walks out and confidently throws down an aggressive window. The placement of this window is important. If Landon just uses the window up on high ground inside, then Ents will just wait it out. This window forces a counter rotation from Ents down to the low ground. Unfortunately, Psycho was caught by this rotation, although Landon did attempt to save him. Now, Kevster, knowing that Landon doesn't have ammo available, uses the cart as a stepping stone and blinks up onto the high ground, narrowly missing his pulse. At this moment, Funny Astro also uses Beat, which allows Landon to walk out and, for a moment, assist in punishing Ghost while ignoring Kevster. Maza bails out Ghost with Beat, and now Landon needs to focus on his own survival, turning 180 to face Kevster and force his recall. Funny Astro arrives just in time to peel for Landon, and the two take Kevster down. Funny Astro's job is partially to mark Tracer, but he can't do this all the time, and has to regular switch between helping Hottie push on the front line and helping Sparker or Landon in the back line. This means that although Funny Astro will sometimes mark Kevster, Landon will sometimes be on his own. Sparker eliminated most of Ence's back line, but Vistola still had a bit of fight in him. Landon, Funny Astro, and Psycho finish him off, and SSG take this fight. Now, something to remember about positioning is that it is dynamic. That's what makes positioning difficult in the first place. It's not a skill that you can just memorize and then download and use. SSG's starting position during this fight is a great example of this. Instead of playing with Hottie, Sparker splits off, very far, on the left lane, and Landon is playing with him. The reasoning is straightforward here. When you want to place pressure on an opponent with some sort of range damage, you'll want to do it from a wide and generally open angle. The range damage in question? That's the Deadeye. Landon's job is to simply keep Sparker alive. The rest of SSG play close on the right corner. Sparker uses the Deadeye, and that allows Hottie and the rest of SSG to hit the gas. Landon focuses on Sparker, and this Deadeye play immediately forces Immortality out of Ents, allowing Psycho to land a pulse kill onto Kai. Landon also throws a long-range Immo to assist Hottie. The trick here is to aim for the wall, so that the Immo falls in the right place, right on the corner. 
Unfortunately, Kepster is out for blood, and even while being marked by Psycho and Funny Astro, he manages to catch Landon, a very valuable trade for Entz. Hottie backs away after Sparker falls, and Funny Astro assists Landon with a taxi to get him back into the fight. Landon reads the engagement well, dropping off of height to avoid the slow from Vistola, and then jumping back up when Hottie makes his own move. Landon needs to read these fights well so that he can avoid wasting his regen burst or ML. Landon keeps Hottie up while pressuring Kai, which forces him off his angle, and now Landon has window and can take the initiative, throwing it down without hesitation and using regen burst to assure Sparker's survival. He keeps himself in Vistola's face, even through Annihilation, knowing that with ammo available, he can continue to sustain and he has the advantage. Hottie drops and calls to focus Masa, and Landon follows up, dropping without fear, using Funny Astro's beat to stay alive. Masa desperately beats in an attempt to escape, and Landon jumps back up to assist Sparker and really places pressure on Ghost so that it's more difficult for him to continue to peek and heal his own team. After forcing the ammo out of Ghost, Landon must switch his focus once again over to Hottie with the Annihilation. Unfortunately for Hottie, Kai is in his face and bursts him down with Landon still several seconds out from another ammo. Funny Aster was also picked off, and so SSG will lose this fight. Ents only have a minute 30, so SSG are in a great position to hold on third. SSG start out by wrapping around the left side so that they have more cover and Ents respond with window. Here, Landon oversteps just a little bit. Kai lands a nade on him, and at this point Landon needs to just sit behind the pillar and survive, but he stays out in LOS of the window and pays for that pretty much immediately. That was an unnecessary death. SSG are forced away and regroup with Landon back in spawn. It's now down to one more fight. Landon stacks with Sparker, as usual, and it's Hottie's role to contest Cart. Kai swings out with the high noon and Landon jumps away, using regen burst to assure survival. Landon knows Ence's next move, that being to clear him from the high ground. Kevster's up first, and Landon takes the fight head on, able to survive with ammo. Vistola's up next, but unfortunately for Vistola, he no longer has a backline. Psycho did a bit of mining off camera. Landon is safe, and Ents are now in a rush to contest. Kevster is the first to touch, but Landon is intent on taking him down before his team can catch up. After Kevster falls, Vistola is once again right on top of Landon, but with both region burst and ammo available, it's easy for Landon to survive while the rest of SSG peel for him. SSG succeeded in their third point hold. Now we are on to SSG's attack. Remember when we talked about May and spawn holds? Ents decide to run this. Kevster is a bit more flexible than Psycho, and this allows Ents more options without swapping between players. SSG have a trick of their own up their sleeve, with Psycho starting on Venture. This is an extremely interesting choice, but it does make sense. There isn't much distance to cover when you're breaking a spawn hold, making this a perfect environment for Venture to thrive. Ents use a similar tactic as SSG, placing Vistola on Ram close to the right side door as bait. Kevster uses the wall to isolate Hottie, who uses the block to survive, and Landon makes a small but important decision here, that being to not use jump to heal Hottie during the wall, and instead just focus on breaking wall and healing afterwards. Landon could have scaled the wall, but that puts him at immense risk of being punished and having his cooldowns forced early. Landon knows Hottie's at full HP when the wall is placed, so he trusts that Hottie will survive. If Hottie's critical after the wall, Landon can always use either regen burst or immortality to keep him alive afterwards. After Hottie's back to safety, SSG are able to re-engage, and Ents, who have no cooldowns, make the absolutely critical error of not giving up a bit of space. Kai is out in the open, and an easy kill for Psycho. Landon helps deal a bit of damage as well, and hits the final blow on Masa. Vistola is positioned too far forward, and without form available, is also an easy finish. SSG broke Ents' spawn hold in 30 seconds. Kevster also swaps off of Mei for the next fight, fine with sacrificing a bit of ult charge for a stronger composition. We have yet another lesson to learn during this next fight, this time looking more closely at the importance of reading a fight. SSG start by, as always, poking Ents' rotation. This is of course important for Landon who wants to build window before Ghost. To poke this rotation though, Landon is swung out a bit wide, and that's fine for the moment. But once Ents rotate up through the high ground, Landon is stuck in a very awkward position. Landon needed to rotate out earlier, and at this point it was too late. Vistola cut onto this mistake and threw a slow to prevent an escape. And when Landon peeks out for a bit of greedy damage, he is instantly punished. Not even provided time to use his immortality. This is another example of Ents taking advantage of a situational opportunity. They were all on the same page and were communicating to make this kill happen. Fortunately for SSG, Ents make a mistake too, with Vistola dropping far too early and taking significant damage from Psycho before using form. Ents did their best to bail out their tank, but fell one by one, forcing a reset. 
Ents have one more fight on this first point, and as SSG engage with Ents through the left, Kevster uses the opportunity to pressure Landon from the right. Landon immediately hears the blinks and is able to mark Kevster, forcing the recall. Landon was likely expecting this play. The Tracer will usually make their move when their own team enters a brawl with the other team, which causes a distraction, and that makes it easy for the Tracer to engage from a different angle. Something that you can do easily to up your game is to think about what your opponent wants to do and how they might do it, and that will make reacting to your opponent easier, just like Landon did here. After Kevster is forced away, Psycho absolutely wipes through Ens' backline with Tectonic Shock. SSG have immense momentum on this attack, and now their goal is to keep it. SSG scout the rotation from Ents and shift their focus to the left, and here, Landon throws down an incredibly valuable window, without hesitation, allowing Sparker to instantly remove Ghost before the brawl even begins. This is a good opportunity to talk about one of the most common mistakes I see from beginner Baptiste players, holding onto window for far too long. Baptiste's window is one of the fastest charging ultimates in Overwatch, and usually you will build it every other fight. With that in mind, you can't treat window the same way you might treat other ultimates. It's better to throw it down without hesitation and use it as often as possible, rather than saving it for the best possible opportunity. The fight isn't over just yet, and Landon is aware that Kevster wants to trade. A few seconds after the kill, Kevster rolls in from behind with a pulse that misses due to Landon's jump. I don't believe this was an intentional dodge, but Landon's erratic movement made Kevster's attack attempt more difficult. It was safe for Landon to use his boost to jump more often than this specific position because he was out of the line of sight at Kai, so there wasn't much Ents could do to punish him. And when it comes to Kevster's pulse attempt, Landon would have survived anyways with immortality, albeit with little HP remaining. Landon picks up the final blow on Masa, and SSG maintain their momentum on the second point, so far relatively uncontested by Ents. SSG look to shove Ents inside the right side high ground for next fight, and Landon and Sparker stick a little further back. This spot also happens to be quite useful for Baptiste in particular, who can drop and help or pressure targets on point and instantly jump back up on the high ground when needed. Sparker uses Deadeye, and Landon uses Immortality around the corner after seeing Vistola move forward to directly pressure the play. Landon does his absolute best to keep Sparker alive, and Funny Aster drops beat to allow Sparker to stay on the high ground. If you haven't noticed already, SSG puts a lot of resources into Sparker. Masa trades the beat, and here's where things get a little ugly for SSG. Vistola can stay up on the high ground, splitting Landon and Sparker from Hottie, who is also using Annihilation. Ents are able to finish Hottie and then move in to clean up the rest of SSG. This split was brutal, and the only way Hottie could have survived is if he had backed away earlier with Funny Aster's beat. Now, we're on to the next fight. Tracer Pulse versus Tracer Pulse. Landon needs to be careful with his immortality. It's the most reliable tool SSG has to deal with Kevster in this fight. At this moment, SSG see an amazing opportunity. Vistola is playing on the right side, around the cart, while Kai and Ghost are on the left. So, SSG decide to ignore Vistola and went straight for Kai, with Landon following to prevent a split. This is an awesome clear play and worked perfectly. Vistola couldn't do anything in his position to slow SSG down. Ents, again, are stuck in a position where they must take a rushed recontest, and these situations are where using Window is easy. The threat of point capture forces your opponent directly into Window LOS. Landon does something clever here. He sees Kevster make the first touch, that was expected, and now he knows exactly where Kevster will approach from, the left door. So as Kevster repeaks, Landon throws down the window in his face to challenge. The initial burst misses, and Kevster backs off, so Landon switches focus to the backline of Ents, who are easy targets right out in the open. This might seem like an awkward window position as well, but it's actually pretty useful. Landon and Sparker can switch sides of the window to hit targets on the opposite side, and both can use it to challenge the doorway as well. Kevster, having regained blinks, makes his move and lands the pulse. Landon does use immortality, but he does end up falling. This is actually fine though, Landon got the value he needed and the fight was already over. Kevster's pulse went to waste. We are on to the third point, and SSG have double the time bank Ents had. Sparker has dead eyes, so SSG position far ahead of the cart to completely zone Ents when they attempt to rotate. This gives SSG plenty more time to push the cart up to the corner. Ents now take their turn, with Kai using Deadeye out in the open with the same intent. Landon realizes that this can be punished, so he throws the ammo inside and directly challenges the Deadeye. This allows SSG to take down Kai without fear before he could even take a shot. Vistola advances, recognizing that for Ents to win this fight, they need to trade out the kill. Landon uses regen burst to help keep Sparker alive, and then backs off and away from the room, using the barrels to break LOS of Ghost's window. It's SSG's turn again, and Funny Astro uses beat to allow for an aggressive engage. Ghost and Masa quickly fall, and that instantly puts an end to this fight for Ents, who must reset and attempt a touch. 
The final fight of this match is interesting. Landon has the window, and Hottie has the Annihilation, two ultimates that are very difficult to deal with in a contest situation. Instead of waiting to use it against the Annihilation, Masa beats early, and Ents practically dive onto Landon's position. Landon was likely hoping to survive, kite the engage, and then window afterwards, uh, and he also knew that trying to fight the beat head-on with window was going to be near impossible, so that's why he likely didn't decide to use it. What Landon did manage to do was to keep Sparker alive with regen burst, as well as a few healing shots, and this was all that was needed. Sparker punishes Masa and wraps around top, finishing Ghost and Vistola, allowing SSG to secure the second map of the series, 3-2. SSG do lose the next map, Midtown, but Midtown is also a map that SSG notoriously struggle with, and their next map pick New Queen Street allowed them to clean up the series, moving up to the lower bracket final. This analysis was admittedly much less flashy than previous videos. Landon didn't do anything incredible, but I feel his performance on Havana demonstrates his consistency and ability to manage resources. What might look trivial at first glance are skills that can take months or even years to properly develop. I did my best today to focus on those trivial fundamental skills. I'm sure many of the things you saw in this video are things that you already are aware about and can execute. The real challenge is, can you do it right every single time? What I want you to take away from this video is that consistency can make a huge difference and it is challenging. I've been doing my best to get these videos out faster and I truly appreciate the recent support. Liking and commenting on the video helps a ton, so if you want to support me, that's what makes a difference. Thank you for watching.